Um, so hi everyone. Um, it is a pleasure to, to have you here and to greet you all. Thank you for being here. Um, my name is Natasha Prelevich and together with Farida Sahaya Farah, um, we're speaking to you as uh, core members of Heckler, a collaborative platform and transnational community of art and cultural workers um, centering um, collaborative and collective work. We practice and ask questions revolving the role of arts within movement building by merging artistic, pedagogical and organizing strategies together with strengthened feminist spaces, radical imagination and international solidarity. Uh, many of us, um, as Farid and I definitely come to you from the unceded territory of the Lenni Lenape. Uh, we stand in solidarity with Native American and indigenous peoples leading the movement for resurgence, decolonization and reclamation of their homelands. Uh, we support the struggle by questioning the power relations, extractivist, cultural and institutional agendas and the arts as facilitators of the inequity. Um, in the past months now, we had a pleasure to meet with the artists you will be meeting today as well as next Saturday. And today, these are the artists uh, Anica Vucetic, Gordana Žikic, Tijana Radenković, Marina Markovic, Bojana Saknežević. Um, and together with Rachel Klippa, who is a curator of um, a great exhibition among women, contemporary arts in Serbia, in Pittsburgh, uh, we came to this uh, collaboration as a way to extend the exhibition to uh, new space and um, more um, community, um, both uh, you know, uh, sharing this space together, uh, as well as uh, sharing more of a virtual space and like online uh, extended uh, kind of conversation. Um, with uh, saying that, um, I would also like to acknowledge what is happening currently in Serbia with um, uh, kind of like political and ecological, um, ecological uprising where people are coming together to, um, you know, fight for the air, water and land, uh, as well as um, social, social and political change, which has been um, heartwarming and um, really relevant to witness both from, from afar, but also from the, from the ground. That being said, I would like to give word to, to Rachel. Thanks, Natasha. Uh, I just first wanna thank Heckler for being open to this collaboration and for all of the wonderful discussions that we had. I particularly want to thank Faride and you, Natasha, uh, for all of the work that you both did to organize this event and the time you took to get to know the artists and their practices. I'm really excited about today's event since the format was designed by Faride and Natasha, and it's based on connections that they saw between the artists. I'm looking forward to the presentations, performance and discussion, and I'm very eager to see how this collaborative programming can generate new perspectives about the exhibition and beyond. And as Natasha said, I am Rachel Klipa, curator of Among Women Contemporary Art from Serbia. I hold degrees in art history, Spanish and education, and I currently work as an arts administrator at the Office of Public Art in Pittsburgh. Uh, Among Women Contemporary Art from Serbia features artworks by 11 women artists who are deeply connected to Belgrade. Planning for this exhibition began in 2018 and the concept developed over time after several trips to Belgrade and meeting with many women artists and other cultural workers. Questions arose about how women make art and why, and more importantly, how do their art practices congeal? Based on the artists selected, their education and practice-based graduate work at the University of Arts in Belgrade revealed a critical touch point in regard to the basis of their artistic concepts and influences. What seemed at first to be an eclectic mix of artwork and art practices, ongoing research unveiled that all of these women approach their work from personal perspectives that comment on their lives as women or share views about economics and globalization. I would also like to point out that this exhibition in no way represents all women artists in Serbia, nor is it conclusive in its scope. If anything, I see this as an initial inquiry and hope that this exhibition can grow and evolve over time. Among Women Contemporary Art from Serbia will be on view in Pittsburgh until January 9th, 2022, and then will travel to the Bronx River Arts Center and open at the end of January, 2022. So thank you. And I turn it back over to Natasha and Faride.
Um, so we're going to give uh, like a short um, timeline. So um, the artist that you will be hearing is first. Uh, so each artist will be uh, sharing their work to up to 15 minutes. So um, the first artist is Anitza uh, Vucetic, uh, followed by Gordana, Tiana, and then we will have a break for 10 minutes. And then after the break, well, we will hear from Marina and uh, Boyan and then open to, uh, to Q&A uh, with everyone present. So the first artist to uh, present uh, her work is Anitza, um, Anitza Vucetic. And uh, you will you can um, read um, about each artist in bio. We will be in the in the chat. We'll be sharing the bios. So Anitza, uh, hello. I'm going to... Can you hear me? Uh, hello to everybody. Uh, thank you for inviting me to this meeting. Uh, I am visual artist uh, from Belgrade, Serbia, uh, working with uh, video installations and uh, video uh, environments. Uh, my work uh, exposed at the exhibition among women, contemporary art from Serbia, uh, titled uh, as creation number two, that is a three channel video installation made in 2013-2017. Uh, and uh, the first edition of this work is part of the collection of the Gallery of Contemporary Visual Arts in Serbia. Uh, I will tell you something uh, about this work. The central image of installation uh, Creation 2 uh, shows the motionless uh, body of a woman in a narrow space below the water surface. This body is deprived of her female attributes. Uh, it is without hair, eyebrows, and eyelashes, with breasts covered by fists, as if paralyzed in a spasm. Alternatively, opens and closes her eyes. Uh, uh, in the left and right projections, emerge the body of the same woman in an effort to stand out from the vertical pillar of rough, rough water and materialize in space, dives and emerges with closed eyes and tussled hair. care. Uh, what we could see in this work is uh, from the cramped room and paralyzed position installation is expanding the, by the side projection and evolving uh, into the dynamic image of creation. Um, uh, I will, please uh, stop now this, uh, the second video, please stop now, because I, I would like to say uh, something uh, more, a little bit more uh, about the work creation. Uh, the creation 2 speaks uh, about uh, moments and situations in our lives when we feel trapped without solution, uh, frozen and powerless. Uh, then we are scared and first usually we deny the problem. Uh, in the next step, we need some time to slowly accept the situation. And at the end, uh, we will eventually try to solve the problem. And the solution needs our focus and uh, all of our creative force. Uh, concerning this uh, uh, work, uh, this video installation, I can could, uh, also say that uh, I often use my own body as a tool in some kind of video performance, which uh, later becomes part of the work. I started using my uh, body in my work uh, in the early 2000s in uh, need to record a certain situation and use it in editing uh, for the realization of video installation or ambience. Uh, instead of hiring someone, it was easier for me to play on my own uh, what they needed to do. Uh, my body in my works represent anybody or everybody. Uh, usually I'm also shooting by myself, so it is complicated sometimes to control all segments of working process at the same time. Uh, maybe now uh, we can start with the second video. Speaking uh, of my intentions uh, in my creative work, 
some of the possible questions could be uh, how to activate observer senses adapted to register rapid changes to the effort of concentrated uh, understanding and presence. And also the question to what extent are we able to respond to the challenges of the new reality? Um, we live in the world of constant change and acceleration, and we are flooded with information and images to the point of contamination and congestion. Devalued and superficial images uh, and information repeat and change quickly, carry um, a minimum of meaning. They are quickly forgotten and spent. Contemplation has been replaced by consumption and concentration by a superficial fleeting defocused gaze, uh, which easily brings us uh, into the position of resource of exploitation because we are disabled to deeply understand what happens around us. This video uh, that are you watching now is documentary. Uh, with, uh, it shows my video ambience compression from 2006 at the Gallery of Agricultural Center. Video installations are moving images installed in space. They imply interactivity and uh, an active relation between the observer and the work of art. They engage the observer to experience the images, to consume them in a different way than the images we are exposed to on a daily basis. Uh, movement of image in video installations <clears throat> requires uh, a focus gaze that moves across the surface uh, and around the image and uh, activates the observer's senses uh, on the effort of concentrated understanding. This concentrated understanding uh, is of extreme importance uh, in a process of understanding ourselves <clears throat> and the world around us. Uh, I install moving images in the space as a kind of theater uh, in which the contents are transferred from the mental screen to the domain of reality. Uh, slow motion picture and sound uh, introduces the observer to a state of heightened concentration on a given picture um, and uh, open the space for the projections uh, and explorations uh, of this individual mental contents. Uh, the perception of the same event uh, is different uh, if it's observed uh, in real or slow uh, flow of time. When the time slows down, uh, it makes subjective the experience of uh, moving images more powerful. Uh, unlike in film, the possible narration of my video ambiences uh, is built in a non-linear way in space by random movement of the viewer between the projected images. Uh, editing of images is spatial. They are uh, set simultaneously and can be observed simultaneously. And the, the observer is given the freedom to connect them in his or her perception in a certain narrative. Uh, and uh, we could say that uh, there is uh, some time, a thin line of separation uh, between our inner psychic space and the space around us. And this uh, th uh, thin line can often mislead us and make us believe more firmly in the external, uh, the more tangible and material world. In my video installations and ambiences, I'm exploring the process of individuation and the ratio of the external and the internal space of the individual. I deal with the psychological states, perception, contents of the unconsciousness, and uh, dreams. An individual who has gained a sense of personal identity has an experience of continuity between uh, what he was once, uh, what is today, and what he imagines he will be. Um, I believe that the examination of our internal boundaries and potentials and our effort to grasp and the inaccessible and inexpressible, our constant quest of the ulterior could open issues of duration, essence, meaning, possibilities of change, and the healing power of art. That 
that is what I want to say about my work. Now, thank you, Anita. That's all. Thank you. Uh, if um, anyone has uh, any questions, please share those in chat and we will address them once all the presentations are done. Thank you, Anissa, that was really beautiful. Thank you. Um, now we will hear, um, I think, Tiana, just a moment. Maybe I'm confusing the... No, we're going to see uh, here Gordana Zekic. Hi, thank you, Natasha, so much. Hi, everyone. My name is Gordana Zikic. I'm an interdisciplinary artist from Belgrade. And also, I'm a president of a nonprofit organization called Center 424. And we have a program that is a Belgrade artist in residence. Uh, I will tell you a little bit about my art practice, and then I will show you some photos. Or maybe I can just share screen right away. And then. Do you see the do you see the full screen or is it not full screen? Let we me, just let me try. I think there is some glitch again. And now? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, so my current art practice involves examining traditions and innovations through performance and installations, videos, sculptures, wall drawings and environment created from objects carefully placed in a gallery space. Most of the materials used in my installation come from collecting and recycling found objects such as hair, fur, shells, copper wire, feathers, etc. These items are then transformed into sacred objects using different artistic methods to reveal my perspective in regard to symbolism, spiritual mythology and identity. This transformation demonstrates how personal narratives intertwine with the different ancient narratives. I have always been drawn to explore varied cultural traditions and spirituality, and with my works, I'm putting them into a modern context. I create drawings using inspiration, images from myths, shamanic symbols, and archetypical images. My works explore the practices of shamanism and neo-shamanism, and my art attempts to recontextualize traditional shamanic rituals. I'm researching links between neo-shamanism and contemporary visual arts and investigating the phenomenon of identifying the contemporary artist as neo-shaman. My main hypothesis is, uh, is that the artist as shaman-like, that artists as shamans interpret other worlds, expand the consciousness contributes to the integration of well-being of the community. They enter the changed state of consciousness, have connection with the different worlds, transgress the limits of everyday life, and create novel insights. I'd rather talk about neo-shamanism than shamanism since I'm living in a city and I do not have the same surrounding cultural premises and life as a traditional shaman, so this requires the postmodern approach in my art practice. This way, I can fully embrace postmodernity as potential for eclecticism in my art, which it enables me to freely play with different materials, techniques, and symbols. I approach them with respect and incorporate the most intimate visions and objects in my art. My connection with the sham shamanic and the occult is very personal. During my childhood, I spent a lot of time with my grandmother who liked the occult phenomena and practices, and she was teaching me fortune telling from the cards and traditional reading from traces of the coffee in, uh, coffee in the cup. Uh, growing up with this narrative, well, it was the most natural for me, and it took me some time growing up to understand that this is not the same for everyone. Um, I will first present you some of the works from my doctoral exhibitions. Uh, for my doctoral exhibition, sorry, defended in 2018 at the Faculty of Fine Arts in Belgrade. Uh, what you can see on the screen, it's a general view from the gallery space. Uh, exhibition is called Red Deer. Exhibition consisted of drawings on the wall and two installations with, with objects. This is the part that you can see at the moment on the wall and the other installation with the mask that is in the background. Main concept is that a gallery is like a temple with different areas. First, when you enter the gallery, there are two, sorry, uh, 
when you enter the gallery, there, uh, there is area with drawings and drawings have narrative of its own. To create these drawings, I was first making photos of myself in costumes, creating rituals, and then I made a small drawings on paper. Then finally, I used all this material to make drawings on the wall. I was using charcoal to draw and watercolor for the parts that are in color. I was drawing directly on the wall. And after the exhibition, all this is painted over and the drawings are gone forever. So you can see these are all the close-ups from the drawings. Uh, in my drawings, there is no perspective the back, on the background intentionally because the idea is to use the whiteness of the wall as an unlimited infinite space. This is similar concept to concept of the materialization in a church architecture. The whole exhibition is created as ambient installation and it is made with an idea of creating an immersive environment where audience can contemplate. Everyday objects presented in installation have a new context. Some objects are made from natural materials with intention to conserve and emit energy in a similar manner as they have been used since ancient times for these purposes. Most objects are from my private collection kept during the life and surviving the numerous moving since childhood up to now. Some objects come from nature and they're combined with composition with different materials such as minerals, plants, copper wire, natural human hair, cat's fur, feathers, seashells, etc. These objects have qualities similar to the concept called wabi-sabi. Usually they're very small in order to inspire the sense of intimacy and the desire to hold them and touch them and relate to them. They are tactile and they do not seem cold or sterile. Their edges are poorly defined, which, uh, which should inspire the thought of internal change. Wabi-sabi is a physical equivalent to Haiku poetry. The intimacy can be seen in this example with this three cat sculpture made out of the cat fur of my three cats, which was collected by numerous comics and uh, the dimensions of each one of them was determined by cat's personal preference for coming. The human hair in numerous other sculptures is my own. Uh, it is uh, different colors, depending on the color of a hair, I had uh, different moments in my life. This is made out of my hair or using, using methods of felting. Uh, also this one, um, this is made of a recycled aluminum. Uh, created like the wings and I was using um, etching methods to create a drawing on top of this. Um, the masks that you've seen before, sorry, <laughs> the order is not the best. So these masks that you can see, there are six masks and they're exhibited as a floating in space in the height of a viewer's eye and two on the wall. The central one is the rabbit. The rabbit is a lunar symbol frequently associated with the rejuvenation and a cyclicity of life. Uh, the flower headdress that you've seen, sorry, here, it's the inspiration for this mask is the Ukrainian flower crown called Venok, uh, and it has pre-Christian origin. Uh, deer, uh, the mask called the deer, created with the real deer antlers and different fabrics and flowers. There is a representation of rebirth and fertility and as symbolized in many cultures. Um, there is also all the wings. I'm sorry, I, I think I can't find it at the moment. It represents overlapping wings of birth. It's used for symbolical flight, the spiritual lightness and the spiritual flight. The raven, it's uh, the one on the right uh, from the rabbit. Uh, it's three part mask consists of a headdress and the sleeves also relates to the flying. Lioness is made from paper mache and covered with gold leaves inspired by the Egyptian lioness sculpture exhibited at the Louvre, manifestation of goddess Sekhmet. So this was uh, all from my exhibition Red Deer and now I will show you a few photos from my performances. This is a mask that I created for the performance uh, called uh, The Shadow. The performance was made during the artist residence in Barcelona at Les Cossessa. I was exploring cultural identity and the meaning of tradition, especially mythology in contemporary society. For the performance, I made headdress sewing fabric, fabric and making embroidery using elements 
uh, from creatures similar to dragons or sharks. I am also referring to the Slavic and Catalan tradition. They both have dragons in their mythology. During this performance at a beach, I'm creating the ritual that will help me overcome the fear of deep water and the sharks. And this mask is a protection because I always loved the sea and the animals, but I was facing this double feeling at the same time. I was being deeply attracted to the water and fascinated with sharks. But at the same time, I was afraid. Whatever is hidden in deep water is magnified with uh, my imagination. Whenever in the water, I would start noticing shadow as, and anticipating scary encounters. Uh, water is a symbol, as the symbol is connected to our subconscious. This is why water rituals are so important in many cultural traditions and involve different aspects, such as initiation, respect for ancestors, spiritual and physical purification. The ritual I created for protection and purification was with sage and the feathers. And then I made several drawings on my arms and legs, creating symbols for protection. Also, I wrote a letter to the sharks and left it in the water. At the end, I surrendered to the water. The next performance is called Summer Solstice Performance. This is a ritual for beginning of summer. I was wearing a mask with the deer antlers as a representation of uh, rebirth and fertility. I was standing in a circle of feathers because the feathers have always been associated with freedom, with transcendence and communication with the spiritual realm. At the end, I was uh, painting different sim symbols of the sun and other planets on my body with ink and gold pigment. I was using candles because I wanted to bring fire element and the light. There is a belief that fire opens a path to the light. The fire purifies, the water will recover, refreshes and rejuvenates. Jumping, jumping over the fire cleanses our body and the soul. In many cultures on this day, the union on female and male deities, the sun and earth is cele celebrated because this day is the longest of the year. For example, in Spain on this day, people jump into the sea at midnight because in this way, uh, they're washing away evil spirits. The next one, it's rabbit performance. Uh, rabbit, rabbit mask I was making during my artist in residence in Tunstepidemin in Gothenburg, Sweden. It was made with wool felting technique, placed uh, pieces of wire in the ears uh, to hold their shape. Under the eyes, I made small holes so that it's possible to see just a little bit when I put a mask on. I created several performances in Gothenburg. I was wearing the same rabbit mask and showing up at different locations in the city. Uh, walking and making different movements like a rabbit. Rabbit is a strong lunar symbol in different traditions all over the world. And also for me, it is an important personal symbol and it represents change and freedom. This is a small installation that I also made in the, during the residency. So this is the last one. The performance is called Cutting Off the Bonds. Uh, this was a very personal performance creating during one winter visit to Gothenburg, Sweden. At that time, it was a new moon and solar eclipse, which signifies changes and new beginnings and endings. For the performance, I created a ritual in the forest. First, I took all of my clothes wearing only feathers and setter with sandals that I made for this occasion. First, I was burning sage for purification and right after I made drawings on my body with charcoal, Drawing represents personal symbols and several objects that I was using in the ritual also have symbolic and personal meaning. Candles, bell, feathers, silicon heart resembling a human heart. At the end, I performed the ritual of cutting off the bond symbolically using red wool that was tied around my hands and cutting it with scissors and burning at the end. That was it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gordana. Again, if you have any questions, please um, get them ready and share them in the chat so we'll address them later. The next, uh, next artist we will hear is uh, Tiana Radenkovic. So hello to everyone who is here right now and who is going to watch it. Uh, okay, so today I'm going to show you a few pieces. I'm going directly to this uh, presentation, um, just to share it. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, so it's visible. Yeah. Okay, cool. So generally my artist uh, practice is uh, devoted to a concept of the body. In general, uh, I'm dealing with uh, living and non-living things. Uh, and mostly I'm calling them objects. Even when I'm dealing with the real human body, sometimes I'm calling it uh, as an object um, because uh, a lot of times I'm doing a lot of archiving. Uh, I'm dealing with uh, microbiology, sound things, plants, etc. So um, I will start with this work, uh, still blooming. Uh, this is the thing which I showed in Belgrade um, 2019. It was actually an exhibition. Uh, it was called uh, Women's Stories. It was curated by um, Michelle Blanusha. So she actually wanted uh, from artists uh, to, to find some way to present some art piece which will speak about women in general, I mean, in whatever sense. Uh, so here I was actually using this um, a reference or appropriation to this painting, which is called uh, Flowers in a Glass Ways. You can actually read it. Uh, it is actually by Rachel Rush, uh, 1716. Uh, so this is the, the main thing. So what I was doing here, uh, I was um, at that moment time, I was really interested in the topic of the still life. And uh, we know that uh, that motif in general carries a lot of symbols, elements, reflections, etc. So, um, yeah, uh, also it's uh, interesting that in uh, English speaking uh, fields, it means some kind of composition of, let's say, objects uh, made by human uh, hands and they do not move. But uh, it's also interesting that uh, still life in Serbian speaking language means literally uh, dead nature. Uh, so here, actually, what I was doing, I was playing a little bit with this painting. Uh, uh, women's from the Botanical Garden helped me with this because they actually recognized and made a list of the paintings which uh, were painted um, on, the, on the picture. Uh, so what I did uh, is that I collected everything which actually I could find at that, that, that time because it was... Um, it was impossible to find everything because some of the plants which were there, they are blooming, for example, I don't know, in spring, and some of them, they are blooming in the winter or something. It was super weird because it couldn't be connected at one moment that it's absolutely perfect, like uh, this painting which was presented. Um, and here, uh, actually, I was yes, playing with these uh, symbols which are representing feminine side uh, and there's a lot of like uh, these flowers like um, there were like some flower some tulips wild roses uh, it's not um, visible here but it's also uh, this uh, pomegranate so they're uh, actually mostly um, referring to this uh, fertility things menstruation then um, Mm, physiognomy of the women at, and uh, things like this. So um, here I was actually using this glass bell. This was big, like, I don't know, like 60, 70 centimeters. Um, and uh, I used this glass bell, again, like one big symbol to preserve something, which is definitely not possible to be preserved. So uh, here I put it over everything, which is here. And uh, during the whole this exhibition, which I think it was like one month, uh, the, the whole process started. So at the end, uh, it was looking something like that. I think that it was even worse, but I don't have that picture, but this is something I don't know, like third week or something like that. 
So uh, at the end, like uh, everything is mostly like dead. Uh, but the thing is, yeah, that I was playing with this, that uh, we are somehow trying all the time to um, incubate some things or to preserve it, to, to, to put it in some uh, ideal, let's say, conditions. Uh, also like this uh, glass bell, it's something like you are putting something on something to, to take care of it. So uh, this is it, like this is shortly about uh, this work. Uh, then I'm going to say something about this one. Um, it's the name is like closeness. We are not only us and it started 2017 uh, till, I mean, till 2019, but uh, more or less, all of my works, like they're open, they, they can begin again anytime. So I'm mostly like uh, putting them to work. So uh, what is this about? Uh, here, I was actually working and experimenting on um, um, this like uh, objects and bodies connection how we are actually uh, looking at this, how we are feeling about this, how we are taking care of us, how we are taking care of uh, objects around uh, ourselves and similar. On this exhibition, this is like the um, one part how it was uh, presented. Um, here I was actually using the objects um, from the personal hygiene. So you can find like brush, razor blade, then you can find, uh, uh, this previous one was the sponge for the, the makeup. Um, so mostly like everything which you are dealing with it like through your day or when you're taking a shower. So something that is really like connected with your own body and that after it actually takes that information and somehow it, it stays there. And actually all of these objects are for us some to take something that we really don't want to have it anymore on ourselves. So uh, because I wanted, I, I was also doing these microbiology things with some other uh, works here, uh, after some time of using this, all of these objects, I used the agar, which is actually the, um, let's say it's simply like a food for uh, microorganisms. So when you actually cover this organism and put it in some environments, which is super good for it, like it needs to be like 36, 37 degrees and then this spreads totally like it's starting to, to work. And I, I mean, I'm going to show this one more time because it's visible here how it can grow. So here actually you can see all the microorganisms from my own body, which kept uh, there on specifically on this uh, object. Uh, yeah, here is also one, maybe better, uh, better one. Uh -huh, okay, uh, there was also uh, this video, but I need to stop sharing and again <laughs> to show it to you. I hope it's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. There is no sound, you're just going to watch the image moving. Uh, the second part uh, of this project was uh, uh, two videos, actually. I made uh, um, the closer look on these objects because uh, the thing is that uh, these objects are also here like closed. They are uh, in these boxes, let's say, and the whole thing is referring to some collection to Wunderkammer. But uh, I had, of course, the chance to, to deal somehow with this more. And uh, I made this video super closely uh, because like when you are watching this, you can 
be there close, but not that much close, not even to touch it. And you can't, it's not even possible to, to smell it that much, and, but it can be smelled. So with this video, I was playing a little bit because for a lot of people, they first, they cannot even recognize what is it, but then they are realizing what is it. And uh, the thing is that um, for a lot of people, it's totally like meditative. Uh, but on the other side, it's something that actually can hurt you if you're going to be in touch with this or whatever. Because, yeah, I mean, the, all of these objects, they need to be somehow covered to preserve it, I don't know, from children or whatever, everyone who is going to visit in the gallery. So, I mean, there's a lot of these objects. I'm just going to sh shortly show it to you, like this uh, micro view of it. So yeah, hey, here I was uh, playing a little bit of this point of viewing some kind of uh, things. Okay, and I will also show you the last one. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, yeah, uh, this one I did uh, this year. Uh, I started playing a little bit with the sound, uh, but also with the, the more mm, different kind of material like uh, silicone, which they, they can at least uh, survive, I don't know, one year, I hope so. <laughs> because for my works, it's really like typical that I, I have them in gallery, but after it's there disappearing. So I have just documentation of it. Uh, so uh, this project, uh, Eden, actually the whole thing is based on the biophilia, which is actually a phenomenon which uh, Eric from started to use it as a first. And he was speaking about this as a love for all the living things like everything which is surrounding us and the love which we are sharing and we supposed to share it somehow. Um, the term is uh, close to um, uh, Freud's uh, term of Eros, but this one is uh, much more uh, psychological than, than the Eros, which is more like uh, biological, like it's more like instinct thing. So um, when I was actually uh, reading about this and uh, I wanted somehow to connect it with the things which I was doing till now, but somehow also to do something new, I found that um, that Bible called story like Genesis was really like a good background where I can uh, do some research that uh, actually that uh, mythological story is really nice background. Uh, so actually I use that story to create uh, uh, this uh, piece, but also uh, there is a second part of uh, this one, which is uh, these silicon objects, uh, which are referring also to this Adam and Eve, like uh, first humans who are appearing on earth or I don't know where. So uh, this thing like uh, this exhibition is actually based on uh, these two things. Uh, so I can also uh, show you the plant thing. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay, okay. Just a second, I hope. Mm -hmm. 
just to hear it a little bit how this sounds, but also it can sound different because uh, the, the thing is that you can do whatever you want with this sound and you can make it as a music. But the, uh, I would like to say that... Um, Uh -huh. okay, so, so it's, it's super annoying this like uh, sharing not sharing <laughs> but i hope this is the last <laughs> at least something is happening <laughs> you can see everything one more time <laughs> Okay, uh, so the last thing, um, what I wanted to say, yeah, the whole thing is actually based like uh, one ideal at, uh, utopia place and what I did here is like reconstructed mythological uh, place and I think that actually this kind of thing and this kind of mythology is the thing in which society really deeply believes. Uh, and um, well, also maybe what else? What I wanted to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah I wanted to say about this process of uh, biosonification, which I did on uh, these plants. I did it with uh, with the help of my friends, Michal Mitra. Uh, he made this uh, small device Arduino, and he programmed everything, so did this could work and the thing is that when you are putting these small cables like here you can actually hear these bio impulses of uh, plants yes and also uh, here is the thing that with this kind of processes we are somehow trying to humanize the things which are not humans and it was also the thing which I was thinking a lot of it and uh, like a big question, I think. Uh, and maybe I can also say that these kind of objects, which like I said, like in this story, you have like these human characters. Uh, here they are more presented like some let's say hybrid object because these um, silicon uh, objects, they are made from oil colors, but also uh, from the biomaterials, which I'm collecting over the years, like uh, dead skin from my own body, then hair, nails. So everything is there, it's uh, uh, one big mix of things. Um, and yeah, there are like some hybrid uh, future, objects, human objects, some um, protheses, uh, which, because I wanted to do this um, contrast between this soft, like human material, skin material with these bars and these uh, metal things. So I think this is it more or less. If someone is going to have some question, he can do it after it. So that's it. Thank you, Tiana. It was great. Um, so everyone, we are going to make um, 10 minutes break and come back into the space at uh, our like East time 1.10 or 1.7. Um, that would be 6. Uh, no, this would be 7.07, .07, right? Um, with central time. And then we will hear from Marina and Boyan. Great. So welcome back, everyone. Um, we will continue with a presentation by Marina Markovic, um, who will um, start when she wants. <laughs> we can do it now. Uh, uh, so my name is Marina Markovic. I'm a visual artist from Belgrade. I will not do like the introduction i will just talk while i'm showing so uh so share screen and then yeah 
Just one second. Um, how to go to the beginning? Um, sorry. Um, okay, so although um, the work that I presented uh, um, uh, with this exhibition uh, among women um, is that that is a drawing because I do uh, different mediums. Uh, but um, here I will show my recent project. I mean, what led to my recent project that I'm doing now. So I made this selected um, um, uh, presenta presentation of the selected works uh, with uh, um, works that are dealing with the body and, uh, and especially the skin. So let me start. So, um, well, the body and the embodiment are the central motives of my artistic practice. And somehow the personal experience with anorexia when I was um, adolescent really determined uh, uh, that all because it put the focus of, of my entire, not just art practice, but <laughs> my entire uh, life is around the body and the body issues so um i, I will just skip to this but, but like uh, i have uh, different kinds of works that are dealing with anorexia neurosa this is one of them um so um you'll see that uh, somehow the long-standing corporalism in my uh, practice allowed me to connect concepts of pleasure and enjoyment and uh, uh, in, in a life of a woman and i connected that with the control restriction rejection punishment disobedience and anorexia somehow as a, as an illness uh incorporates all that because um, uh, it, it, it is um, for me it was the way how uh, on one body you have the the clash of um, your own subjectivity and how the society is trying to put you in a mold or something like that so after after those works because i have many of them but here i wanted to come to the point where i started doing um, tattoos on my body and mapping my body so uh this was one of the first works that i did um it was uh, 10 years after anorexia works and it was a um, performance where i did um, my first uh, tailored measurement tape tied up in a node around my waist on ideal measurement. So that was uh, 60 centimeters. Uh, so uh, oh, I, I did that as a, as a performance in New York. And then, um, so what I was trying to do is to map my body on ideal measurement, but then uh, to deconstruct that because uh so how i treat my body in my performances is always like i'm objectifying myself and i'm usually doing the things that society is doing to it so i'm just uh lying there like and i'm like performing a meet <laughs> so uh, and i also find um uh, tattooing the act of tattooing quite important because although it may seem it's like um i don't know like a, a way of branding a female meat by heteropatriarchy or something like that i believe that's the way of um um it, it's one of the strategies uh for the autonomy of the female body so it's like i am like embodying like the the measurement and then i'm deconstructing with thin so um so after it i did as also as a live performance i did one in belgrade i did uh, uh also tailor measurement tape around my breasts 
uh, on 90 centimeters. And although I never had ideal measurements at the same time, I was uh, I had them in the very moment where I was doing the tattoo. So, uh, and it, and it's also like. Um, um, I find it really, um, I, I have many different works that are dealing with that, like a self-discipline and how you are actually um, uh, taking uh, for granted and, and taking as your own, um, like all the, all the propositions that are, um, the society is actually, uh, is, telling you that you should look how you should look like or how you should act or how you should behave or whatever. And then you are actually assimilating that and then you are uh, acting like it's your own. So the, the question between the freedom and Persian is actually the main theme in my work. So it's, and, and I believe it's way harder in a life of a woman uh, to 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 really put the boundaries where is what like what is your choice and what are you are manipulated that that led you to think that it's your choice uh, so uh, so this was the, the the performance in Belgrade and then I did this was in Bern in Switzerland uh, this time I did the cutout of my body like how how like what it would what i would need to adjust or like to to remove or to how it would how it would become perfect so like according to the i don't know fashion tv or um or like a mainstream media so i did those lines and um so this is from that performance and then i did in geneva I did the final uh, thing uh, with a with a measurement around my hips. So, and that was the moment where I actually thought, okay, this is the beginning of the work. So, since I'm alive, like it will continue and it will stretch and it will uh, like uh, it, it it will live with me. So, it, it's 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 my way to deconstruct it. Um, and uh, that, uh, yeah, so I had many works actually that are dealing with the pressure, like uh, social and the cultural pressures um, that are like, like uh, grabbing the female body in different ways and different levels. So this was one of them, but let me just, continue with, uh, with, uh, with the skin. Um, so I did many, like, so somehow the skin became um, my, uh, like, uh, main, uh, main uh, canvas <laughs> for, for working because um, I liked it because it's, uh, um, it's a membrane that separates us and uh, and the world around us and it's a perfect surface for the for the like uh, for the um, what is the word um like uh, for like how where the society is actually projecting all kinds of meanings and readings and everything so i find the double sideness of the skin are quite ambiguous and ambivalent. And uh, that's how I totally, um, um, like I'm conquering it. So this was one of the works where I did some kind of like a different prejudice, uh, like how the like society or would describe me. And then I was putting that on the top of each other and then it, uh, I made a, like a little bruisery or um, it, it's not even readable anymore. Uh, okay, um, so uh, yeah, so uh, this is the to please to serve to obey. Okay, uh, in many of my works as well on the uh, in that uh, that the drawing that I exhibited in in Pittsburgh, I'm uh, playing with. Uh, uh, how to say it's not a BDS, BDSM. It's more like a 
like I'm playing the game between subordination and domination. So uh, I'm, you, you'll see now with, with, with this new work, uh, actually, um, yeah, let me just tell about this one first. So this is Niet uh, the Birash. It's untranslatable even. It's it, it it would be it's not your choice. And this is the uh, the the sentence that I took from the video work of mine, Void, where I had like a, this was this one. Uh, so I took a um, vaginal ultrasound of my empty uterus. And then I was recording uh, my grand grandma, my grandma, two grandmas, my aunts, and my mom. Every time when I would walk into the house, and they would, you know, start their own uh, melodramatic monologues about my empty uterus and my motherhood that doesn't exist. So I was recording, and then I made kind of cacophonic. Um, like preaching speech about what is the role of the woman, uh, what is the um, my role in this universe of <laughs> then uh, so uh, actually and so they are all raised in a in a hardcore patriarchy and I'm from village so they are all kind of not really emancipated but somehow you know they it's it, it, they're they're raised in a different uh, times so but the but the the sentence that they they are all like repeating and repeating is actually who told you it's your choice so i found it like a really strong mantra that women incorporated in their own uh, discourse you know, because they are all uh, telling me from the very, you know, like uh, from the, from their, uh, from the, with the best wishes and everything, but somehow they don't even, they didn't have, you know, the option to, 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 to choose. So they're just like reproducing that mantra of the heteropatriarchy. So, so then I did that, that tattoo at the at the like on, on my like belly where the uh, like womb is so that was also one of with the with the tattoos and so this is actually the project that I'm doing now it's ongoing project uh, the arrangement so the arrangement um, is um, so I started it two years ago. I took my CV and I contacted every institution and the gallery I collaborated in my life with. And I gave them, you'll see it later, uh, I gave them a contract. It's not a contract. It's actually, it's not legal. Uh, in a legal way, it's arrangement that I also took from the BDSM uh, uh, practice uh, between master and slave. Uh, and I uh, rearranged it. Uh, so what I'm asking them is uh, to choose the, the place on my body. So I'm giving them 30 or 40 different spots on my body for, the, for their logo. So it, it has a little um, uh, reminiscence of that, like uh, if it's a good meat, then you, you know, like the you put the brand on but it's not like that just because i always try to not to victimize myself i hate that uh, it's a game so it's a game that actually questions and um, uh, 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 the the power game in, in, in the art world so it's not who is dominate or who is submissive or who is is the game so actually the whole negotiation and the way that uh, uh, I'm playing before they choose and at, at the end I do the two of course but uh, uh, that's actually my, my the, the, the main thing I'm interested in so these are different logos that I have on my body um, so I did CV retroactively um, uh, during Corona time because I was by myself and I was like, uh, and then, uh, so, 
so they are all you'll see the 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 the, the arrangement so they are all choosing parts that they would like to have their logo on but um, so recently i started doing it as a live performance because then i thought okay so the arrangement has a different ways like the word arrangement has a different ways of reading so it can be arranging stuff on my body it can be the whole arranging the how the performance will be done or like uh, the whole game it, it's all uh, can be uh, under that arrangement so for this one in berlin this uh, autumn um so i invited my collector from berlin to do the tattoo on me so i had the the closed circle so i had the galleries that is actually uh, choosing the spot, uh, the collector that is doing the tattoo, and uh, and uh, and okay myself. Uh, so it, it, it's the triangle game, uh, and uh, it was uh, yeah, it, it 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 was live in the gallery. So the next one was in uh, in Art Block Art Fair where the producent did the like producer did the logo. So it, it, that was her first tattoo ever. Uh, and I don't mind actually how it's done. I like the game way more than the uh, than than the actual result. Um, and then, so this was like, for example, in, in in Berlin, like, and I every time I'm just like translating it, and I'm like a little bit switching what parts of the body I'm I'm offering because the game is mine. Uh, and then, um, yeah, so I did. Uh, 10 days ago, I think, in Zagreb, uh, also. Um, so it's, and actually the, the whole performance is size specific because each time I'm doing it, I'm uh, doing it uh, within the things I have there. Like uh, it, it, every time it's totally different and it's like, uh, I'm playing because I'm never. I was never interested in a in a performance in a in a usual way. I'm more interested in what I have on my body after. So, um, but I like to be exposed while I'm doing that on in different ways. So the next one that I will do, I will not be. I will not be even present, but I will do something with. Um, because I'm interested more in how how performance nowadays can be done, something like that. Um, so, for example, I don't know. Can you see here? Uh, so this is uh, the one with uh, Pittsburgh uh, Cultural Trust that I did today. Uh, so um, I, I mean, I like many people uh, like hands, <laughs> many institutions. Uh, so. Um, yeah, so I did today this one. I don't have yet uh, photos, like good, but uh, Rach uh, took the right upper arm outward. So uh, I did that. And um, what minute I am now? You're, you're at time, Marina. Okay, okay. I'm just thinking, should I play some video or not? Uh, and yeah, but this is actually the ongoing project that I will continue um, until I, I have body. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so and so the the, the 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 real thing, what I'm interested in is the power power relation inside of the art market or the art institution or the relation between artists and the galleries. Um, yeah. So, so I'm done with 15 minutes. Yes, you are done, but thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Marina. It was really informative. Um, so the next artist is Buena Saknezic. And then um, after which we will open for Q&A. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. 
So, uh, hello everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Buana Knežević. Uh, I will be uh, presenting the artwork, um, A Queen of Montenegro. Uh, this is the artwork uh, that is also presented uh, within the exhibition Among Women. So now we are you're seeing now this um, a shared screen, yeah, the picture. This is a picture which is currently at the exhibition. You can see it in, within this exhibition. And uh, another one is currently on view in the center of cultural decontamination uh, in uh, Belgrade. So unfortunately, I couldn't uh, say hello from the space, but uh, I prepared this nice photo so you can see how it looks right now. So, as an artist who works in different media, in a long term project, A Queen of Montenegro, I combine traditional artistic talk, tools, and skills, and in this way, I subvert hierarchies within the systems of patriarchal society as an act of rebellion using methods of translating oral tradition, sound and storytelling into media of contemporary network society. My family background and heritage is linked to the rural areas of Montenegro. In Montenegro, Female members are explicitly and systematically oppressed, neglected, and erased from the family memory. The roots of my family tree can be followed through the centuries, representing only female, only male members. Within the investigation, I subvert this patrilinear order by reconstructing a traditional oral history which puts to the fore the personal histories of my female ancestors. The search for the lost names and the desire to tear the erased female family members from oblivion results in an open artistic process that consists of a series of artworks and performative interventions in response to the centuries of exclusion and discrimination. This is an ongoing project and in the current phase, I'm actually focused on sonic the construction of this lab. If you didn't know Gusla before, this is a one string instrument which is in traditional Montenegro exclusively reserved for male family members. And it is most often associated with epic narratives and oral tradition, which are passed down from generation to generation. With the experimental treatment of the instrument, as well as the specific way of playing that produced sound between voices, freaks, and melodies. I propose an alternative reading of family history with an intention creating a fictional narrative in which male and female positions are shifted and reconstructed. I made a promise, I promised him that I would 
goes all the way, this way. So you put the instrument between your legs and play this way. But since the main reason why the females are excluded uh, from the performances, Gusle performances, I would say that some of them are now playing, but it is not in the tradition of Montenegro. This is not allowed because they use this excuse, you know, that this is that she cannot do the instrument between her legs. So decided to play as a woman. So to invent some new rules for the play. Especially I like this one. It sounds like it sounds like a drum. I also love this one. Actually, because this instrument is actually, uh, yes, this is a handmade of my uncle. So he uh, made it for his son, uh, who was a child back then. So this is a smaller version of Gusle. But you know, this is not actually planned to be played like this. So my arm really hurts, you know, when I when I play it. Somehow it's, it can become really hurtful. So sometimes I also use my legs to help, but I play it in the opposite side. So I basically put the instrument between my legs, but upside down. And then I can produce this really nice one. I love this one. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
was a short improv performance of Queen of Montenegro. Um, thankful for your patience. Thank you, Buena. That was amazing. And big thanks to all the all the artists who presented today. Uh, now we are going to open the floor for um, for some reflections, comments, questions, um, whatever uh, comes to comes to mind and you've been thinking about in the meanwhile. Does anyone have any questions? I have one question for Marina. <laughs> I would like to ask Marina, uh, what uh, does she think uh, of a possible situation that uh, perhaps one day she gain uh, a weight and uh, what would happen with this uh, tattoo around her body, uh, this centimeter? In, in situation if she would gain more uh, weight uh, this in this situation for example one centimeter would be not anymore one centimeter it would be two or three so what does she think about future of her tattoos that is what i actually wanted i'm not actually getting there but i i really wanted like i would love i don't know to stretch that like to really deconstruct because so far it's still like fine but yeah i still didn't have um, any 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 yeah and any experience with different shapes but uh, i i believe it will it will it, it, it will stretch because that would be actually way more interesting like how something that is you know, like, um, yeah, one centimeter becomes two or three or something. So, yes, I would really like to have that experience. <laughs> I'm torsing for I, you. Would, I, I mean, I don't know, like a pregnancy or something like that doesn't really matter. I even wanted in one point to, to, to make myself bigger, but I didn't succeed. Yeah, but yeah, why not? Like... I would I would love that, but I love the, the fact with tattoos that they are they are like living with you, with you with your body. So you know, like I'm getting older, so they will all um, they they will not stay like this. So I, I believe that that that's that's the beauty of them, like for them to be incorporated, like as your skin, and then and then to live with you. And do you have a wish sometimes to take off some of them? Never. 
Right. Or never. I mean, I, I, I didn't explain. I'm all, always doing only pink tattoos. Pink is my color uh, because I think it's the most um, subversive color. I think it's really, uh, there is no other color that has so, mu so many meanings already like in like inside of it mm -hmm. so i'm doing it uh, also because it looks like a like a scar uh, mm -hmm. or like uh, like a mark like it doesn't look um, you see for example my hand mm -hmm. it looks like something that is already you know part of it it doesn't yeah. look yeah. like a usual tattoo so uh it, yeah but my grandma told me it looks like a uh, allergy <laughs> she was like <laughs> Marina, you are covered in the allergy. Yeah, so, uh, no, but I like that. Like, uh, for example, Tiana probably understands me because she's like dealing also with the same, with the body, you know? So yeah, I, I would never remove any. I mean, I don't have any tattoo that is not my work. So uh, I never did any, like a freestyle tattoo. I just did the works, so yeah. So you, would, you are your own gallery. You are your own gallery and ex exhibition space. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> okay, moving gallery. Okay. I mean, we were together in this group, so yeah. and it doesn't exist anymore, but it's still there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. As okay. a part of my history. Thank you, thank you, Maria. I have a question for Boyana. Um, so I'm curious in terms of subreading both the, uh, the, the instrument and the ritual of playing it and kind of congregation um, and the, like oral history around it. Have you ever uh, practiced it actually with uh, female family members? Um, well, not yet. Not yet. Although, I mean, uh, it was actually, it is a process because you need to find the uh, female family members from Montenegro, my Montenegrin part of the family uh, who are actually not afraid to play with this. <laughs> I mean, it, it sounds really weird in 21st century, but uh, definitely Montenegro is really a uh, traditional still. And there is one sister that actually uh, knows how to play. And they told me that she knows how to play but properly, because they don't think I play Gusla at all. They say, they are saying that this is not, uh, them, them not playing, I'm not playing Gusla at all. <laughs> so, yes, but some of them were like, uh, actually this, uh, this project uh, triggered their, uh, you know, uh, visions of themselves within the family, their positions as females. So, uh, I think uh, now some of the relatives started thinking to 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 leave some parts of the you know uh, uh, like house and uh, possessions to 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 female members to female family members. But let's see. I mean, I told them they are they are, they are going to be part of the project. So if they don't give me anything, like it will be also visible uh, in the project. So yes. Uh, but I can play. Actually, I can. Uh, I can do some workshops with female members. So let's see. Let's see. This will be nice. Mm. Yeah, because it's really uh, in terms of just having experimental. Uh, regardless, I mean, definitely in the context of uh, power relations within kind of like patriarchal society, but also like the way how you're approaching the instrument and kind of deconstructing the, you know, the notion of expertise in general. Um, and exp having, you know, experimental approaches actually like liberation, uh, uh, liberating process. It's something that is very inviting because it's so playful, but also like deeply ritualistic. Like, I, I really enjoyed it. It's really beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. And I love the, all the red behind you, the marks of, of missing uh, women in the, <laughs> in the family tree. Yes, I'm also wearing, wearing, uh, you know, <laughs> this, uh, but these are a series of drawings where I started to, you know, I, I this was an uh, investigation really uh, to find out uh, because 
these uh, family trees, like it, it, uh, it is from 17th century, you know, so it is like really a huge one. And uh, there are a lot of question marks, you know, there. So I, I, I did interviews and then tried to, to get a name somehow. So I started this uh, series of drawings, like it also, and also kind of ritual, you know, uh, over and over again on different formats, uh, trying to, and sometimes I add some names, you know, sometimes I was making mistakes. Uh, so sometimes relatives also tell, tell me uh, also on exhibitions like, oh, you, this was not Mileva, this was Miliana or something like this, or add these names. So it's uh, uh, actually really uh, inviting for uh, in, like for participation <laughs> of the whole family. So <laughs> let's see, yeah. Great, thank you. Anyone, uh, <laughs> does anyone else have a question? <laughs> Yeah, I actually, now that we're already at uh, Boyana, um, I actually, I'm so happy that um, I see your work now because I made something, I made my own gusle. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because um, um, from a show mom- me, Show me, I want to do a print screen. Okay, cool. Oh my God. Yes. Amazing. But it's made from kitchen tools. So, um, so yeah, I didn't, I didn't have, um, uh, because I live in the Netherlands and I didn't have any access to any kind of gusla and also they wouldn't ship it to me. I really tried. Um, so so um, um, I just had to make my own. <laughs> okay, but you also have this Montenegrin uh, uh, background, yeah? Yes, yes, from my, from my mom's side, um, they're all from Montenegro and I experienced kind of the same things as you said um as well so uh, i don't know i just wanted to show <laughs> <don't know> <laughs> this, <funny. laughs> this is really cool <laughs> yeah and uh, yeah do you sometimes perform with this <laughs> um i actually did a whole music video um with it oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool. also more like performative and um i worked with a um music producer who's from italy uh, a friend also a girl and um we actually plugged a uh, piazzo uh, i i think it's called piazzo like the the, the this, metal uh, thing contact microphone exactly exactly contact mic yeah uh, to to the main part so to the to the salad bowl to the salad bowl part and then uh, we, <laughs> and then we put it in an um uh, oh my god the word the words um to like a speaker kind of um and it made it so much louder and also to like a pedal that makes uh like different sounds so it was like crazy <laughs> Amazing. share the video share the video with us oh. so send us the link here please <laughs> And this was amazing, yeah. Also enjoyed your, your performance, your Zoom performance, really cool. Yes, I'm not sure how it's here, but because I, I tried to connect Mixer without sound card, not a little bit of technical stuff. Uh, and because I usually use also some effects, you know, some uh, delay and reverb. Uh, so, but this time I don't even, my, my, my contact microphone even didn't work. So I, I use this, uh, headphones like from from the phone and uh, that's how i um, yeah so i i hope uh, it was uh, like listenable and, yeah any other questions i have um so Thank you all for uh, generous presentations, really, and this performance was amazing. Buena, thanks again. Uh, I have a question for Marina, um, because I, um, and I don't know what I phrased, I actually, it's not a question, it's more a reflection on some like past events and a, a question around the process of the way how you navigate certain issues around uh, the process itself and, and the illness that you are uh incorporating in your work and that it's kind of so tied to your life um i don't know like it was several years ago during my uh, undergrad uh i had a situation where in my closest surroundings um 
a friend was dealing with the same issue. Uh, so she she had uh, had that illness, and it was really around um, wasn't there to support that from the beginning. In a sense that like people were waiting for the last moment that she you know falls down and then uh, help her hospitalization. So and it was really I don't know you know more about the illness. It's highly complex and people that needs to work with you uh, to kind of help that um, be cured. So um, yeah, it was really for me devastating to see that happening. And at the end, I, I took her by hand and uh, helped her hospitalization uh, because um, she just couldn't you know function. And one of the things that uh, that was um, really obvious to, to everyone is uh, hyperproduction, like hy hyperproductivity, like that her body was, uh, you know, um, uh, exhausting itself. Uh, and speaking about, you know, um, art education society, uh, which is kind of supporting that capitalist uh, extraction of one's own body and um, one's own. I don't know, nervous system or whatever, like that race uh, towards um, and constant hyperproductivity. I'm just curious um, to hear your thoughts on that, like in your own process, once you are like, if you uh, encountered that issue related to hyperproduction and, you know, uh, hyper extraction of your own body and senses. But also one of the things why I wanted to ask this uh, is that once I helped her hospitalization, so the first days of her lying in bed, uh, when she actually is supposed to focus on self-care, self -care, like to rest and to kind of uh, take vitamins and nutrition that was uh, given to her um, in Travensky, I don't know what the translation, but uh, she was on infusion. So she would get uh, an advice from one of the professors uh, that uh, she actually should look at your work and how you uh, used your body uh, in a way that it's artsy, uh, in a, like in a, in a complementary way for, for you. But at that moment, I found that really problematic, uh, like to kind of give that advice to somebody who actually is dealing with you know life in that moment uh so um and i was i was under question mark like um later on i i learned more about you know healing and self-care in my own <laughs> uh in my my personal case so and i understand that the healing aspects of art can help oneself to go out of that dark place but there is also a responsibility in a sense how other people around who are dealing with the same thing can be advised or can be, you know, um, reflect upon that. And is that helpful for them or not? And, uh, uh, and that's not on you to kind of, how you are negotiating all these questions related to capitalist extraction of one's own body or related to, um, related to uh, responsibility, but also, so it comes to, you know, separating yourself from guilt and responsibility. So um, all these intertwine. And I would just like, like to hear now when I'm in, in a situation, you know, to, to hear about your process from you, uh, it, I would uh, appreciate if you can just reflect upon like, what I shared. Is she well now? Uh, she's she's well like i she's uh, i mean we are not in touch for many years but i'm seeing that she's she's well and i feel so happy for her uh because um that's uh, that's and it's it was heartbreaking for me like how uh, uh, much that was not seen as something that you actually need support to be taken by the hand and be yeah. brought to a better yeah. place with anorexia because you know like it, 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 you can really go to the point that you're like skeleton but still in the eyes of the society like you cannot you you, you you're you, it's not visible that you are ill and it's not about actually uh, my entire high school i was anorexic without uh having uh, anorexic body 
for example, because my first anorexia was when I was like in my in my primary school, and then my entire secondary school I looked like this, and I was anorexic. And I cannot explain to the people, you know, that it's not about the food and it's not about the body. That's that's the you know the the top of the iceberg. You know, it's just like something at the very end, like how it's visible, but it's a, like a serious emotional and then endocrinological. And then, you know, like it, it's so, and it, it, I, I, like I, I, I'm, I'm working as a counselor for eating disorders for like 15 years since, since I recovered for the second time, like I'm working and, you know, regarding my art practice and that, like, that's how usually uh, girls, mostly girls, now even boys, would actually find me, you know, mm -hmm. like, and somehow, yes, I always play, I never, um, th th there's a thing with me that I, uh, that, that's what I even mentioned when I was, I, I never do like um, victimizing of myself. I do, I do extra like like for example my anorexia diary is like all pinky and glittery and you know it's like my anorexic photos with a barbie head and blah, 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 blah. like it's all sugary and it's, it's a, like that kind of sweet and um and nice and proper and girly and everything that actually you really see what is the problem there you know, like, it's not like I'm um, covering the thing. It's actually how I'm talking about what actually brought me there. Because the, the issue with every anorexia girl is control. It's control over emotions, control over everything. They're all control freaks as well as I am. Uh, and, uh, and also being obedient, being mm -hmm. proper, being perfect. Like, you know, whenever I have a new patient, like I always ask her, okay, can you tell me what is your like score in school? And they're always like the best students, the very perfect girls who never did anything, you know, wrong to their parents. Or they don't even, they don't even know to show anger or any of unwanted emotion. So I think that actually all of that is, is, is really, uh, mirroring how how they are putting you in that like you are the perfect girl a perfect princess a perfect you know like so like the perfection like the terror of perfection is actually what leads you to there and it's not just like about anorexia anorexia was actually had a peak you know mm -hmm. in 90 end of the 90s and everything but now I'm looking some different uh, terrorism you know like you go on Instagram and you see different um ideal of beauty you know like uh now it's like the fit body or now it's like the keto diet combined with the fitness and with uh, i don't know what but the the modification of the body and self-monitoring of the body those are all issues of nowadays society you know like like you're all the time disciplining your body and modifying in order, like the, the process of modifying is actually the crucial one. You know, like your body is never adequate. You know, like you're all the time, like seeing that it's not good. Like anyhow, it looks, I mean, that's what you are getting from the, from the, from the out. So, and with anorexia, you know, I did that study. I don't want to now take the time, but you know, like it's not, it's not a new thing. It's, it, 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 you know, in 11th century, it was uh, crazy. It's a pandemic, but like it, it had a, it, like, it was like thousands and thousands of women were dying in the monasteries all over the Western Europe. Uh, of anorexia mirabilis, which was like, you know, it had a different um, connotation in a way that it's like uh, they were like uh, starving because of the Christ and because of the, you know, like uh, spiritual, uh, com like spiritual thing, but like actually it's the same, it's the very same. And it's always the, the thing that you don't want to, uh, like, you are stopping the penetration of something that is like super, um, um, I don't know, like, uh, for example, those girls, like in the monasteries, like how, how you would behave in the 11th century, you would be predestinated to have a husband, you know, whoever like uh, your father gives, like you, you didn't have autonomy. So actually 
Anorexia, although it may sound, although it may seem like totally crazy, it is a fight for the autonomy. Like you are like putting your own boundaries, like, but at the end you end up even in the worse, um, um, like, um, in, in a worse position than you started, but like still like it, but I'm glad that your friend is good because I think it's a really big problem that you, we don't have institution that is dealing with that on a, in a proper way. And it doesn't, and I think it's really important also for the people to realize it's not about the food. It's not like, oh, then why don't you want to eat? Why do you want to be skinny? Like, it's not about that. So uh, I'm trying to do that also as a part of my mm -hmm. artistic practice. But yeah, and I, I think so far, like, as because I know how many girls uh, 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 like were came to me because of art, and then we end up like uh, like uh, with the counseling and me sending them to the proper people to 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 cure themselves. That's awesome. Yeah, it was really uh, terrifying, you know, when people are asking you, like you're calling them, like she's not well, you know, like she needs help, and like oh. You know, losing hair, teeth, and they're like, "Oh, she did she collapsed?" And I was like, "Are you fucking kidding me? Um, <laughs> like, what do we need to like wait for? You know, that moment for somebody?" No, to, but no, you know? nobody even realized how like the like the, there is a statistic that one of three anorexic will die, one will have recidives until she dies, and then one will get cured, which is terrible, terrible, terrible. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Because I, 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 I didn't know, but I, um, uh, I, um, how you translate mm -hmm. Assumed. I assume that you are like working with people, you know, and I think it's important to also say that so, you know, uh, people can, uh, yeah. can come to you. <laughs> for help. Sure. Thank you both. Um, so just to note on time, we are a little bit over time. It's 2.07 uh, here. Um, we are happy to stay a little bit longer to get a couple of more questions uh, from everyone. Uh, but also if you have to run, totally, totally understand that. Are there uh, any other questions? Are you want to go? Well, I have to go, unfortunately, but thank you all so much. This was amazing. Thank you to the artists for your great and generous presentation. And thank you all for being here. I'm sorry I have to leave early, but thank you. And hope to see you next week. <laughs> Bye. Um, anyone else? Questions for other artists? And it's unmuted yourself. Or do you want to ask something or you're just by accident? If not, I would like to um, ask a um, question to uh, uh, Tiana, uh, especially on the back of the, the conversations between, between Yelena and, uh, and Marina, um, in terms of like your, uh, how you approach body and these kind of like power relations within, you know, going extending beyond one body, but also fear that is both uh, both embodied but also projected into the objects around us, um, and the the sense of this kind of like perfection and cleanliness and how um, you know those kinds of pressures um, onto how we relate really to our to our environment. So maybe to to talk a little bit about that. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I had also some uh, works, uh, actually, that book is exhibiting the, on the exhibition. It's, um, it's like a collection of the scars. I mean, it's really like, I don't know when did I did it, but it's still like ongoing project. 
Uh, so actually everyone who, who wants to share his car, he can do it because I'm collecting it. Uh, I was also like uh, doing something similar to to this, like what is like perfect body. I was starting with this uh, topic, like uh, the skin, how we are seeing it, uh, what we can hear on commercials, what they are presenting to us and uh, that kind of pressure, like you, you need to be better every day, otherwise, I mean, you you don't you're not going to feel good. Uh, you don't belong here. And I started doing, for example, that um, things uh, with the scars. It it was super nice to me uh, because um, everyone is having like a scar, and um, I was asking people to picture it by themselves. But I said like just uh, to closer look. Uh, it's a pity I don't have it here at all uh, to show it. Uh, so uh, it's really nice to look at it like it's a collection of, um, how to say it, like damaged skin. But it's uh, really nice because I was having a really good conversation to these people, uh, to their uh, experience about this like every scar is something like um, some some typical story for us and even if we are going to remember I don't know what in our life when we are going to look at that skin and that uh, let's say damaged uh, skin we are going to remember some specific situation so for me it was really nice to hear all these uh, stories about people and um, I don't know. I mean, uh, some people are reacting to this like this is absolutely horrible. I can't even look at it. Uh, and there are some people like, OK, it's fine. I, I, I can handle it. So it, it's also like that. Um, it's like point of the view and also that closer, closer um, view of the things also i'm playing with that in this video like uh, some things they can be really beautiful but uh, they can really like uh, hurt you if you are not paying attention or whatever like you're taking too much risk or i don't know i mean yeah we need to take some risk in our lives otherwise everything's going to be boring but yeah i mean um it's also like health. Uh, for example, at that exhibition, when I was doing it, uh, because, yeah, I, I mean, I created this bacteria in the space. Um, after it, I was sick. I mean, from my own body, from my own bacteria, because they really spread it a lot. And it, it, it is like super ironic, but yeah, I mean, I hurt it myself somehow. So I don't know, I, I like to play with this, but still I need to be careful um, in terms of other people. I mean, I'm not there to hurt them, but somehow at least to show them how these things and uh, they're working, I don't know. So yeah i mean in these previous works i was focused uh, a little bit more to this let's say like skin body issues how to present yourself in the public especially i mean we are all everyone is in the public everyone is having some skin face whatever i mean we need to be presented somehow and uh, that thing that definitely uh, there is a pressure but like Marina said, I also noticed on Instagram that uh, uh, things are somehow changing every day. They are changing. And uh, yeah, like she noticed like now you are having these like fitness things and uh, some also mm, there are people who are promoting like, um, oh, how they are saying it, this uh, body positivity or something like that. It's a, I don't know, it's also a thing. So, I mean, there's a lot of these discourses or, yeah. Thank you, Tiana. Thank you. Um, anyone else with a question or comment?
Um, well, let me be a question for Gordon. Um, um, both actually kind of like mutual question for uh, both Gordon and Danica in terms of um, how you real uh, since I mean you did talk a bit about it in the presentation but uh, thinking of body as both site of um, uh, intervention um, but also mapping of both emotional neurological kind of landscape uh, how does that um, translate into into your work for Gordon I'm mostly performance work and um, for uh, Anitza when actually while doing the performances or like what you know the, the process of the, of the actual performance and then I think we can um, close up after that okay then I will I will answer just shortly uh, well uh, as I already said I, I'm using my body just as a tool, and it is not uh, important that it, uh, that it is my body. Anybody could uh, be used in, in my, my works. Uh, just it is for me uh, uh, the easiest way to realize uh, my idea because uh, I can control the process from the beginning to the end. So my body is anybody. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> is, is that a good answer? <laughs> mm, um, yes, thank you. Can you please rephrase the question for me? I'm not sure I understand exactly what you meant. I think that uh, before you go, uh, Yanis actually wants to add something based on what Anitza uh, shared, and then we can follow. Yeah, that would be great. Um, it's really like a follow up question or an observation really on your presentation and you know the walk through what you showed uh, at the beginning um it really reminded me of Tacita Din perhaps or work um, by Mona Hatoum something like that so I was wondering because you mentioned like immersion and this idea of kind of traveling in different spaces and times through the medium um I'm wondering how you construct your environments and um, if there is uh, this um, this idea that presupposes what you what you make like immersion and the the active viewer being there that on the time I mean that you create the work on your own. So you do, do you think of this relationship between viewer and artist? Uh, of, of course. Uh, well, not not so about, about relationship between viewer and me. Uh, more about viewer and the picture, moving picture that I am showing. So uh, I must say uh, uh, that my um, how to say uh, uh, the, the artist who inspired me at the beginning of my uh, work in video is Bill Viola, of course, <laughs> and. Um, I am working uh, with video uh, since beginning of 2000s, uh, uh, more or less. And uh, uh, the, the starting point uh, uh, for uh, me using video as a medium uh, were um, my, my dreams and, and uh, works um, concerned to, to dreams and, and uh, elements of unconsciousness. So uh, the, the trick is uh, that I, as I like to say, I, I'm trying to, um, for, uh, to how to say, to realize uh, um, uh, my mental, uh, uh, from my mental screen, I try to uh, uh, move and realize in, in the reality, the contents of my dreams or my unconsciousness. So, uh, I don't know if, if that's enough for, <laughs> for the answer of your. I I am. It is like a, a kind of theater. I am uh, uh, building this um, uh, ambience or or uh, installation in uh, in a dark dark space. Uh, I I install the pictures in in the space so that uh, your observer is is. Um, can, can uh, walk around these pictures and uh, simultane simultaneously um, consume them. And uh, the, the main, main thing is that observer is the main actor because he is uh, building his own narrative 
during this uh, uh, walk through the pictures. I find it uh, quite intriguing and um, perhaps it's, you know, it, it strongly relates to what Gordana presented because it, um, this idea of creating um, narratives anew or reconstructing narratives based on uh, preconceived ideas, rituals, like um, Gordana also, uh, I think um, she made a case of a palimpsest or I thought of it as a palimpsest because you know, we have these drawings that are um, being erased using paint over them. But, uh, you know, this is an act, um, like drawing becomes an ephemeral act. But again, for the people that have visited the exhibition, there remains, or as, as, as I see, there remains kind of a, an embodied experience, a memory of what once used to be there, right? So it's almost like a palimpsest of what, what is to come and what was before that in the image. And um, I would like to pose this as a question more really, if you, if you think of it like that. Yes, you're right. I think this is a very interesting question, like what lasts and uh, because I don't think like anything would last forever. So in that way, like if the artwork itself has its value only if it's on paper and if we can keep it and preserve it and pass it on, or if it's just this um, uh, experience that we are having. So in that way, the audience have the experience of this artwork, but then when the exhibition is over, they just have a memory. And then this brings the question of how do we perceive things? Because what is in our memory, it's also something that it's um, they say that we every time we remember something, we remember only the last thing, last time when we remember it. So it's like we're creating new memories all over again. So I think in that way it's changing and it has life of its own in a way. I think like it has even more value. I think it's bringing interesting questions. And yeah, so and Natasha, what, uh, what else do you have? Can you please repeat the question <laughs> about the body? <laughs> um, well, I was interested in um, you, the, the aspect of, of performance in your work, where I think at some point you were saying that it was like either site sensitive or site specific and just how, um, what role does the body and also geography play um, within, within your practice? Because you also um, have the aspect of a more nomadic practice, I guess. It's not necessarily to that extent like contextual. Yes, um, because a lot of times I'm collecting objects uh, from that specific place where I am at. For example, if I was doing a residency, then I was incorporating those elements from those places into my artworks. And then I'm trying to um, connect with an environment. So it is really important, for example, if the performance is part of that place, then I'm trying to relate uh, more elements uh, so it's not something that it's um, planned in advance and then just did I don't do it just as a play that it's um, that that is already um, think out uh, no <laughs> this is not how I want to put it uh, it's not like a, a play like a theater play it's something more spontaneous so it's in that way, like uh, I'm incorporating elements uh, from from that moment, and also I'm using my body in a way. I was I was using my body even before I was starting making performances. I was I noticed that I have this practice that I'm expressing um, different stages and different changes, emotional and different parts of uh, my life through. Uh, my how I look like I had different hair colors over the years and it's kind of like changing my appearance and I noted that people's reaction have um, uh, a lot of bringing a lot of meaning that people perceive you in a certain way so I was playing with these elements for since I know about myself so then I started incorporating this with more awareness to my art so in that way i think that uh it is really important like how i i relate all these elements like uh, site specific and my body and like all everything is connected i don't know if this answer your question <laughs> yes thank you um thank you everyone we are going to wrap up 
I really appreciate you uh, being here and for a very, first of all, like generous and thoughtful presentations and perform awareness performance, as well as all the questions that uh, were shared in the space. Um, so the uh, second event, um, and unfortunately last, <laughs> with this uh, group of, of amazing artists is um, next Saturday uh, at the same time at noon uh, East time. So we will be sending an information about that as well and hope to hope to see you there. Thank you all again. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.